Decades before the word dot com slipped past our lips as the answer to all of our problems, the internet was created by the US military, who vastly underestimated how much people would want to be online. Commercially, the internet started to catch on in 1995, with an estimated 18 million users. Who says online users are a bunch of anti-social geeks? Look, here we are in this nice cafe, drink in hand, friendly people, and we're surfing the net. This is the Icon Bite Bar and Grill in San Francisco, where you get the best of both worlds, real people and virtual people. You can come in here and sit down, have a drink, socialize, and check out some cool websites, look at your email, or log on to your favorite news groups. Today, we'll show you the growing power of the internet. The rise in usage meant an untapped market, an international market. Soon, speculators were barely able to control their excitement over this new economy. The IPOs of internet companies started emerging with ferocity and frequency. In Silicon Valley, the high-tech capital of all things internet, a culture of reckless self-promotion took hold. A new ticket-selling internet startup in San Francisco celebrated changing its name with a party for 3,000 people in an airplane hangar. Internet companies also spent an exorbitant amount of money on advertising. During the Super Bowl in 2000, more than a dozen internet companies spent an average of 2.2 million each on 30 second spots, wasting over 40 million dollars worth of stockholder money and not so hard won venture capital. These companies offered their services or end product for free with the expectation that they could build enough brand awareness to charge profitable rates for their services later. The motto, Get Big Fast, reflected this strategy. It's time for e the number one place to invest online. Venture capitalists saw record-setting growth as dot-com companies experienced meteoric rises in their stock prices and therefore moved faster and with less caution than usual, choosing to mitigate the risk by starting many contenders and letting the market decide which ones would succeed. Investors were blindly grabbing every new issue without even looking at a business plan to find out, for example, how long the company would take before it made a profit, if ever. The low interest rates in 1998 and 1999 helped increase the startup capital amounts. American news media, including respected business publications such as Forbes and the Wall Street Journal, encouraged the public to invest in risky companies, despite many of the companies' disregard for basic financial and even legal principles. In financial markets, a stock market bubble is a self-perpetuating rise or boom in the share prices of stocks of a particular industry. The term may be used with certainty only in retrospect, when share prices have since crashed. A bubble occurs when spectators note the fast increase in value and decide to buy in anticipation of further rises, rather than because the shares are undervalued. Typically, many companies thus become grossly overvalued. When the bubble bursts, the share prices fall dramatically and many companies go out of business. The first shots through the bubble came from the companies themselves. Many reported huge losses and some folded outright within months of their offering. Siliconers were moving out of their $4 million estates and back to the room above their parents' garage. In the year 1999, there were 457 IPOs, most of which were internet and technology related. Of those 457 IPOs, 117 doubled in price on the first day of trading. In 2001, the number of IPOs dwindled to 76, and none of them doubled on the first day of trading. Well, you know, during the dot-com boom in the late 90s and early 2000 and 2001, these companies were, you know, that people called dot-com companies were starting up to exploit the internet. And 
people had this the, the belief that they were going to be unbelievably successful, that they would replace all the traditional kind of companies, and the, the stock prices were going, you know, just skyrocketing, going completely crazy, and companies that had never sold a single product or made a single dollar were worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And people who had money to invest were investing in these companies and the stock prices just kept going up and people figured they would just keep going up. It was just like the real estate boom 10 years later. So my broker, I mean, I wanted to start investing in dot-com like everybody else because I saw how much money people were making and I asked my broker what to do. And he recommended a company. I, luckily, I forget the name of the company. This was a company that bought shares in other dot-com companies. So I invested... I don't know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars in this company, and six months later, it was worth nothing. <laughs> now, you know, if I'd invested earlier, I might have been able to sell it earlier and make money from it. But basically, these companies, most of these companies, never produced anything. They never, they had very low sales. They never made a profit. Their whole business model was to basically give away, give away the stuff and hope they would build a big market. Now, a few of the dot com, a few of the companies that started during the dot com period survived and have prospered, like Amazon, eBay, and so forth. But dozens or hundreds of them, like Webvan and Pets dot com, you know, grew up, grew, crashed, you know, grew to stratospheric valuations and then crashed and don't even exist today. Only fifty percent of companies survived the crash. Millions upon millions of dollars were wasted on internet startups that never saw any profit at all. To this day, the NASDAQ still hasn't recovered from the burst. Many argue that the dot-com boom and burst was a case of too much too fast. Companies that couldn't decide on their corporate creed were given millions of dollars and told to grow to Microsoft size by tomorrow. I'm gonna pop some tags, only got $20 in my pocket. I'm, I'm looking for a come up. This is fucking awesome. Now, walk up to the club like, what up? I got a big.